Today we're going to achieve the art style of Da Monk's art, the Taiwanese artist who knows his way around colors. What he does not know is that we are going to replicate his art style in Blender, which sounded like a threat, but I like to frame it as admiration. <laughs> so, I mean, he really does great stuff. We're gonna study and recreate this piece. The techniques are super versatile, you can use them for cool animations, cool graphics, and you'll learn a lot about materials and shaders to make such professional stuff yourself. Let's go. As you can see, the piece is made of capsules and the fastest way to make capsules in Blender is Shift-A, Metaball, Capsule. But you know, these capsules are actually quite friends. They want too much. So instead, a better approach is to take a cube, add a bevel modifier with a huge bevel amount and many segments and scale the cube in edit mode. Now this is a capsule that does not bond with other capsules and we can start putting together this scene. Now this scene has 16 capsules placed in pairs of two and if you're not cautious you might start you know placing them with a good old shift D. Duplicate and move and duplicate and move and duplicate and move so the touch exactly on the edge and you're like bad normals I don't want to do that I'm tired. Yes, because you're not using the optimized workflow. <laughs> I don't know why it had to be German. Well, the optimized workflow is to turn on snapping first. So you turn on snapping in grid mode. So you go to edit mode, you go to x-ray mode, and you enable face selection with three. And now you can nudge at the end and start into fixed positions on the grid. And you can make sure that two capsules tips are exactly touching each other. And if you want to now add more capsules, you just select those two. You duplicate with shift D to the side and press shift R literally until you have the 16. Like that is so easy. Also, you probably want to change where the capsules touch in the center. The reference, as you can see, the line is very irregular. It's not like a straight cut in the center. So you select one column, you go to edit mode, press three to select faces, Alt Z to go to X-ray mode. And now you can select those two middle faces with a simple box select. And you can super easily move both of them up and down at the same time. And once you're happy, you just go out of the edit mode and repeat this with the other columns. So you end up with something like that. This is already pretty close to the reference. Now the question is, how do we do colors? Well, for that, we need to understand how gradients work. So gradients have two parts. They have the grayscale source, and they have the colors. For example, if you translate zero to blue and one to red, this would be a blue to red stripe, or this would be a circle, or this would be a blue red blue circle because the zero is also in the end of the circle. Or for example, this gradient would turn into a room looking thing. So the main idea is that you just translate a certain grayscale value to a certain color, and all the intermediary values will be turned into a mix of those two colors. In Blender, you would just take, for example, a gradient texture or a noise, and you add a color ramp, and it's pretty intuitive how this works. But with this artwork, with this situation here, we know the colors, but we don't know the grayscale version. So we need to recreate the grayscale version. And for that, let's first understand how the colors flow on those capsules, and then we can just very easily recreate the grayscale thing. So let's mark the colors. We have yellow, we have purple, we have blue, and we have deep blue, which Apple would probably say midnight ocean. I'm gonna say it's deep blue. If you now simplify this gradient to only those points, it looks like that. And that's a very easy gradient to replicate. We just need from bottom to top a zero to one grayscale source. And if you map zero to yellow, 0 0.25 to purple, 0 0.5 to bright blue, and one to deep blue, we get this gradient. And to actually do this in Blender, you just go to your material node tree and add such a setup, which takes the generated coordinates, which is just a zero to one gradient on each axis and separates only the Y axis, which goes from bottom to top. And then you add such a color ramp that does the grayscale to color translation, as we just talked about, and you have it. So if you switch the mode to B spline as well, the color transitions are much smoother and look just as good as the reference. And if you find that the colors are washed out to your liking, you can change your color management to Kronos PBR neutral, which makes them a bit less neutral, I would say. <laughs> but this is quite miles away from the reference. I actually want to say it is a cheap Chinese copy, but this would have been, I think, horrible on like many levels, including a political one because he comes from Taiwan. We're not gonna do that. It is a known fact 
that this looks bad and the Monk's Arts version looks good. So how can we make it better? Well, the reference gradient is more sophisticated. It curves a bit like liquid on the edges. Uh, how do we do this? Well, if you want to change anything about how colors flow, we need to change the grayscale source of the gradient to give some difference for us. Because currently the source has absolutely no difference between the edges and the center of the capsule. And if we were to introduce a difference, the gradient would change on the edges as well. So let's create a grayscale gradient that differentiates between the edges and the center of the capsule. And for that, we need to know how much the surface normal of the um, capsule is pointing towards the sky. At the edges, it does it in a different way than in the center. So this gives us such a gradient that goes from minus one in the very bottom to zero at the edge and plus one at the top. Now we don't care about the negative part too much because we're looking from the top anyways. So for us, the smallest value will be zero on the edges to one in the center. And if we add this to our bottom to top gradient, we get colors that are curving and bending on the edges, which is good, but we don't want it to happen that much. So we can multiply this newly added gradient with a small value, and then we can control the bend amount. So some gradients on the reference, you can see they're bent up, some gradients are bent down, and we can control that with this multiply. As a little um, you know, spice here, I also added such a setup that ensures the grayscale values are always between zero to one, because this is the range the color ramp node expects. So without it, either the start or the end color would get way too dominant as we bend up or down. We don't want this happening, so I just um, added this setup here that takes care of it. So now, we can add this material to all the capsules to get a complete artwork. But this is a slippery slope here. This is a slippery slope here. So you might pick the convenient way and go just, you know, select a new capsule, pick the gradient material, duplicate it, change the colors, select the new capsule, pick the gradient material, duplicate it, change the colors. You might do it until all the 16 ones are done. Short term, that's very effective, very fast. But now if you wanna change anything for all of the capsules, like adjust the saturation of all the capsules, for example, or change the grayscale source system, you're cooked. You're not gonna do that because you have to do the same edits 16 times for all of those capsules. And unless you're into like uh, BD <laughs> BDSM, you're not gonna do that. So let me show you how to make your edits linked between the capsules. So even though you have like 16 of them, you can do the edits and they're all linked and the colors are also different. So let's go Let's go back to the start where only one of them has a material and you select all the nodes and control G, you group them. And you're gonna be like, I know bedrooms, I know node groups are cool, but they're like literally shared. So all the capsules will now look the same, even if I make copies of the material. That is correct, but you can add parameters. For example, for the bend, you can add a parameter and now given every capsule as a different material, you can change the bend independently while the node groups content are the same and shared between the capsules. And yes, I can hear you from the back again. Bad normals, you can't add the color ramp as a parameter. All the colors are gonna be, I think I had a voice crack though. All the colors are gonna be the same. Well, do not back off, there is a solution. Go inside the node group and disconnect the color ramp. And instead of it, adds an evaluate closure node and connect it there. Now this node is a wannabe, so it will be whatever you tell it to be. It's kind of like this plant in Plants vs. Zombies. <laughs> it will just replicate whatever we tell it to be. We tell it what to be through a parameter um, pipe connection. So we add a parameter and we call it color ramp. And through this pipe, this wannabe will listen to your instructions and decide who to pretend to be. We want it to be a color ramp. So copy the color ramp, go outside of the node group and add a closure zone. Connect it here into the parameter and paste in your color ramp. Now the valid closure node will be whatever is inside the closure zone. And that's pretty cool because now you can add materials to the capsules and change the ramp while all the logic is still linked. So if you decide to add like a saturation node, it will affect all the capsules. If you wanna do something before the color ramp, it also changes. So cool, I mean, Blender developers are just amazing. They really do such, such, a, such an awesome job.
So we've done some heavy technical lifting. Let's breathe in. Let's deal with some artistic stuff. So a little interesting thing you can see where two gradients meet, he has made the colors rather similar, like dark, dark, light, light, and so on. So you can achieve this pretty easily by just flipping the ramps and adjusting the end colors. Also the space between the gradients and around them is filled with color, glow I would say. So you can add a plane halfway through the capsules and if you render with cycles you get this glow. Now it seems that only the brighter colors emit light though and the dark ones don't do that that much. So we can do it so that for the emission shader at the end here we create two possible states. So it's one where dark colors do not glow and the other where everything is a normal brightness, what we want to see from the camera. And we mix between them so that for the camera we use the normal state and for every other object in the scene we use the adjusted state. And this makes it possible to control the edge glow separately from what we see into the camera. That's looking pretty good already. I would say we have only one last thing missing here, which is adding those glass plates. And you think like that's only glass, but honestly, I'm so surprised how much better this glass actually makes this thing look. I mean, you're surprised at the little things in life, <laughs> I guess. That is it. We take a circle, we select the bottom parts, um, we move it down, we fill, extrude, add a bevel modifier to smooth the corners and shade it auto smooth as well. So we got the shape. And now we can add the material and to make it look like glass, you literally just crank up the transmission, make the color fully white and this is it. Now probably you will see that your captures look very dark through the glass and it took me like a pretty good time and a little bit of tears, <laughs> mostly just a good time to figure out what's happening here. You probably remember those two brightness states we create for our capsule material. Currently only the camera rays see the normal brightness we want to see. But when the light ray passes through the glass object, it is a transmission ray. So we need to make sure that in our shader setup, all the rays that are either a camera ray or the transmission ray will see the normal brightness version. And for that we just add the transmission and camera ray together and we end up with the problem going away, which is great. This is looking very close. There is one last thing that makes it look so good, and this is the edge glow. So you can see there is, you know, on the edges of the capsules, if they are seen through the glass, they glow pretty bright. And we've covered every single technique to do that. So first, let's just, let's just create the state of capsule edges that glow. And for that we need information about the edges. We already did this with the same normal node setup that we used before. I just copied this one over near the emission shader here. And this time we don't want it to be white at the center and black at the edges. Instead we want it to be white at the edges, black at the center. So the result is a gradient from the edges that we can adjust with a power node. And if we now add it to one, we get a brightness state that everything glows with a strength of one, but the edges glow a bit more and how much more you can control with the multiply node and as you remember we want to show this only through the glass so we can add a mix node to our emission strength and set the transmission ray to control when to show either state. Cool! Now you can duplicate the glass plates using the same placement as in the reference and here it is! Super cool stuff! You can use it obviously with many different flavors like I did in the intro giving them different twists, there is a little vault, a little crate, a little uh, extra collection on badnormals.com where you can get those uh, three project files and also detailed explanation of the radial scene, which was like surprisingly complicated to figure out. So it's gonna save you a lot of time. That is my pitch. So see you in the next one and enjoy the moment wherever you are. For me, it's literally the sunrise. See you.